And so this lesson in there about disposing of the carcasses actually has a scientific basis behind it. It's actually important for keeping the stream alive, um, even though that's not the purpose given in the story for it. The end result is the same. Um, likewise, there was a festival that the Klinket people would do where they would leave the stream when the salmon would first run. They, the village would have a festival, but it was they couldn't go near the water. And this happens to be a, just about the right amount of time for the salmon to do a good portion of their spawning before they start getting harvested. So the, the species is, you know, and again, it doesn't say in the story, don't, you know, get away from the stream so the salmon can spawn. The story, the, the festival is told as an unrelated event, do this. But the end result is that the salmon are allowed to spawn for about a week before they go in to get harvested. Um, so there's a, a the first run salmon get a chance to spawn and die before people come and start harvesting the salmon that are continuing to come up. So this is a, this is a you know anyway I hope sorry I'm just rambling on and on I apologize. So I would have a unit with the elders coming in and telling the salmon boy story or the teacher would tell the salmon boy story and then the students would discuss elements of it and then there would be papers on nutrient loading in, in freshwater streams. There would be, um, you know, they would discuss some of these and then they go through the different elements of it. Um, and I've given versions of this lesson to everything from grade school kids up to college students, um, but the curriculum I'm specifically designing is for high schools. I mean, that's just one example of it. And so anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how long this is right now. I'm, I'm probably bored the crap out of all of you with this. Um, it's an area of, it's an interest of mine. It's one I'm going to continue working on no matter what I do uh, professionally or where I end up uh, as, a, as a terminal career. Um, but this is an area that I'm keeping interested in because I think it's really important. Um, one, of the, one of the outcomes of this is that it gives students a, there's a sense of pride in their culture. Um, and, it, you know, it's not... It's, here's the native students getting pride in their culture or, you know, hearing that this is our people's traditions um, and th they're not these anachronistic little, you know, cute, quaint little stories. They actually have some validity. There's, some, there's a lesson to be learned that's valid today that everybody, all people can hear and gain wisdom from. And so it's being presented in that sense, which I think is important. Um, and also, though, is the, you know, the, the other students, the non-native students, are hearing the language spoken, they're listening to the stories, they're participating in the in the, the festivals, the dancing that comes, there's dances and songs and things that are all put worked into these. Um, and by participating in those things, it it's it how to put it when you when you join somebody in their celebrations, it's really, really, really hard, I think, to turn around and, you know, shove them down the stairs or what you know, we have a lot of um a lot of issue with uh racial issues between native and white students uh, and it goes both ways uh, that's unfortunately the way these things usually uh, go back and forth but it makes this it makes it um harder i, I think it, it adds a sense of you know everybody's participating in this this is all of us as human beings and the teachers that we have the elders that we have come in um I'll, i'm going to hopefully have time to put some clips in emphasize this that every peoples have their you know this isn't this isn't native traditions because natives are better or because natives are have any kind of spirit this is saying this is native traditions because this is a unique way of hearing the story um western tradition there's a here's another way of hearing the, the same story um in a in a you know more codified scientific sense um it's all being taught as if this is you know human knowledge being presented um, in a way that's respectful to everybody involved. And I, I think it's a really an amazing thing. And I'm going to, um, I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to edit out, um, but one of the outcomes of it that I thought was, the, to me, was the most meaningful, um, and it wasn't really my participation that had a, as much to do with it, or if anything to do with it in reality, um, but I was amazed. The, the first year I did one of these camps, um, there was a student in there. Uh, this guy had been arrested, um, was doing jail time or juvie time for... Um, what is it, uh, gang-related, he, he was involved in a drive-by in Anchorage, um, it was pretty horrible, uh, nobody was killed, um, there was somebody injured, he wasn't one of the people shooting the gun, but he was, the, the group was picked up, um, there's a lot of, um, Native Alaskan gang, um, problems in the big cities, and so he was picked up for that, he was arrested, uh, he was sent, uh, to a juvenile facility down in southeast Alaska, um, 
part of his probation was that he would attend these camps. So he would be out of jail to attend these camps um, where he would be working with, you know, the idea being that maybe he would learn something. And first year, the summer we spent, um, this kid was, I, I, I hated this kid. I'm sorry to say. I, I couldn't, I mean, I really wish that he would do something. We were all waiting. It's like we were told if he does anything, violence, if he, you know, anything like that, we can tell the teachers they'll kick him out and he'll go back to jail again. And we were actually hoping for that. And I know that's really sad, um, but this kid was, I mean, he would not listen. He would put his headphones on, his walk or his uh, MP3 player. Um, he would, you know, just walk out of the classroom. You know, and just all this kind of bullshit. He was just a, a just a little shit. And so the next year when the camp started and I saw him walk in the room, I just went, oh, my God, this squirrely little punk is back again to ruin this camp for me or to make it harder for me. And what I didn't know, I talked to one of the other counselors about it, uh, the, one of the counselors about it. Apparently, after this probation period was over, um, he didn't want to go back to jail. So he talked to one of the elders that had come to the camp and asked if they, you know, if he could do something else. And they they worked out where he would be put under the care of a of a non relative um, who would function as his uncle. There's it's, a, it's an important part of Clinket culture. They have uncles that are kind of like the the people who teach youth um, how to behave and how to how to be. And this uncle would sort of you know take him in, provided he you know went to school, provided he did all these things. Um, and, you know, there, there was, a, I don't know all of the details of it, but provided he did that, he would not go back to jail or, or he would, whatever the deal is. Okay. I'm not gonna, I, I don't. And so he was found himself in a little village, um, surrounded by native people from, cause he, he was a foster child who had been taken, um, terrible, terrible, tra I mean, I, I really felt bad for, I felt bad for wishing ill on this kid after hearing about his life. I mean, it was about as hellish as a human being in, in this country um, can endure, I think. Um, but so this kid ended up at the summer camp the second year. And I, I was again, I was just like really up thinking, God, this is going to, you know, ruin everything. And the kid walked in and he greeted me in a traditional clinket greeting. And the first time some of the kids started talking during the lecture, he like, quieted them down and told them to um, be respectful of your elders and for the next for for the next three weeks or whatever of this camp this kid was polite respectful always in the front always trying to learn um, and told I mean he, he acted as, as he, he we kind of adopted him as a uh, as a, even though he was one of the campers, we, he, he sort of took on the role of a counselor with the with the younger kids, especially um, enforcing respectfulness. And this kid was amazing. Um, he had learned a huge amount of his traditional language. He had never had any of his traditions ever. I mean, this, he was literally had been taken out um, of this horrible situation and was raised, you know, in this pretty pretty miserably in foster care. Now he was getting his traditions again, and it. It, it 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 transformed him. Now he wasn't interested. He still it told me he wasn't very interested in the science part of it. But he was now take, he was working with his adopted uncle, um, commercial fishing, and you know just had fallen in love with the whole commercial fishing thing. But he was learning traditions. He he had made his own um, his own regalia for the for the festival. Um, everybody just adored this kid. Now he was just had just transformed himself um, in one year. And he said it was these camps. Again, not my portion of it. It was it, for him the 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 cultural part of it had a lot more meaning to him. But it's it sort of shows a, a value to these kinds of things. Um, I think. Uh, again, I always take the attitude like I've done before. I said before with other issues. Um, I think of if I if any of us if we expend you know tens of thousands of dollars and hours and hours and months and months of our own work. And we save one person or help one person out, um, then everything's worthwhile to me. If that's all, out of the hundreds of other, you know, if one person is saved, then the the program is is a success in my opinion. And and then this kid represents a success. So um, I I guess I'm gonna quit. I I probably again lost most of you about the first five minutes of this. So I'm gonna let you guys go. I'll take care. Bye. 
that song says, just so that the land of my grandparents people are not taken for granted, let our voice sound across the land. And that's the way we are this morning. I want you all to know that the land that you're on is historical. It's almost like the National Monument and other very, very important things in the history of the U.S. for us as Tlingit people. This land means a lot. It says, here I am, here I am, here I am. And what is that, that to me means, whether I come up to my grandfather's land or my father's land or my great-grandfather's land or if I come and open a science book or I open a math book I, or I open a social studies book I'm saying here I am God will fight. 